We are live. It's not 11.05, but you should be cheering. The anthem's over. And we have a new sheriff in town. So, today we're going to do some breaks. Happy walking by this a little earlier. Sean's finishing it up. We're, we're taking it to uh, <coughs> somewhere. This is going to, it's a kit for somebody. We don't normally put the brake lines on it, but this one we did put the brake lines on for the customer. I guess it's an option we offer and it's going to get shipped out. We were going to do Larry's car today, uh, Larry A. And uh, since we're kind of a small little group, um, Larry asked us to pray for him. Uh, his wife has a little problem with her eye. and um, Larry, we're going to do that. God's a good guy and he can handle it. I remember one time my, uh, they were saying some bad things about my wife Ann this a few years ago. And uh, she went into surgery and you know, I mean, it didn't look really good. But they came out from surgery, and uh, I remember the oncologist came into the room and said, you don't need me anymore. I mean, this, there's no problem here. So, our God's a big God. He can handle it. We will keep Larry in our prayers. Wanted to say that. We were going to do Larry's car today. Um, probably see that Monday. And I will be calling talking to Larry, uh, doing the color thing. But we're going to work on getting the floor painted uh, this weekend so we can flip that thing over and then start working on the top of it so we'll probably be talking a lot about paint next week uh, but today we're just gonna since this was sitting here go over some brake lines um, and again, the cool tools that we use uh, well we did do a show did we not do a show on the double flares yes it may be way back down the thing but uh it, it was a good, and then we did some YouTube uh, uh, videos on, on brakes. So it's out there. I'm not going to show you how to do a double flare, but absolutely, you got to do a double flare. Uh, here's a cool tool. So I did get a cool tool. It's a quick, quick, tell me what it is. Anybody know? If you don't know, when you get your brake line, it comes all coiled up. And straight brake line looks so good. I mean, I can try to straighten it by hand, but by the time I get it all straightened, it's not so straight. There we go. So it's a pretty cool tool. We use it. We have a couple different sizes. We can use it for our. Uh, we use aluminum tubing to go back for our gas lines uh, a lot of times, and that'll straighten that out too. So this is a neat tool. Uh, I'm not sure who makes it. Probably to come from Snap-on or somebody. Yeah, but about a hundred bucks. They, it's only only hundred bucks. bucks. So to, to straighten your lines out one one time, yeah, I'd, I'd buy it. But no, we use it a lot here, and it's just a handy tool. And for those guys that have a tool fetish, like my son, if it's a cool tool, he buys it, even though he doesn't use it. But uh, there's that. I like it. Like it a lot. If you use it a lot, it's definitely worth it. So let, let's just start in the front here, and I'm just going to kind of show you how we uh, do the brakes on it. It's a 23T. Um, this one happens to have power brakes, so it's got a booster on it. Something that's pretty important. This one has through frame fittings, and it doesn't have to have a through frame fitting. It can have a, a tab welded, and uh, you can put a different type of fitting. But this through frame fitting, you can see it's on the top side of the frame here. If you look from the side, make sure that you don't put this in the center or to the bottom. Put it to the top because your radius rods are going to come in and they're going to go in this direction and you don't want it so close to this that it's going to come up and hit that so this is something you really need to remember so this is a through frame fitting you just uh... actually that's probably yeah they're just hand tight well but I'd have to take it all apart it just goes through, tightens on here it's an AN fitting goes on this side with a braided line goes to your caliper and then this is a, a compression fitting on this side so we come down, we go along the bottom of the frame on this one. We come down and go along the bottom of the frame. Our both fronts, now it's possible you could come down one side and go across the front, but we, we think it's cleaner. This is just the way we do it. So we take both our front frame, um, our front brake lines, and go down along the frame rails. And then we come and we tee it back as we come back behind the cross member. There's a couple different ways you can secure it. 
Uh, we've not secured this one because obviously the customer is going to take it apart <clears throat> and paint it. So we've got holes drilled here. You can do this one of two ways. You can either drill an eighth inch hole there and just put a pop rivet in it or you can drill it and tap it quarter twenty and use like a nice stainless button head and uh, just put it in there with a with an allen wrench either way just secure it so that your brake lines aren't just falling around something we've done and we we didn't do it uh, for a long time and I don't know why it was such an obvious thing we made this go down a little bit farther this is for the um, steering box so you can run your line up underneath that bracket Keep it clean under the thing. When you're standing back, you really can't from the angle. I mean, Josh is, is pretty low on it. You really can't see the brake lines under there. It's a clean look. So we've come, we've teed the rear, or the front brakes together. We've teed it, and we've put a proportioning valve in the front. Uh, there's going to be an argument. That I've, I've had people actually argue with me that it needs to go in the back. The purpose of the proportioning valve is so that your front brakes and your back brakes lock up um, at the same time. You don't want to have uh, your front brakes locking up first and on a slick floor like this, this is a pretty slick floor in, in our shop here or if you're on gravel or something like that, what will happen? Your front brakes will lock up and your back brakes or your back wheels will keep pushing it and you will just slide. You can't turn, you can't do anything, you'll just slide. and. Uh, if that's happening to you, what you need to do is you need to cut back the pressure for your front brakes. And then uh, you just do that by turning the valve. And turn the valve until you get it adjusted the way you like it, and that's set, done forever. Uh, they've got proportioning valves that are actually built into the uh, master cylinders or go to them and, and different ones and, and stock cars so that there's no adjustment at all. It's just already preset. But Here's that. The reason we do it on the front, the front is so much lighter. On a heavy car, it, it makes a difference, but the front end is so light that uh, you need to just um, cut down the pressure for your front, and that's why we put it there. So there, there it is. Uh, you can debate with me if you want, but this is how Spirit does it. Put it where it needs to be. That's the ultimate answer. And, and on bigger cars, yes, you do need to put it in the back. Um, we like to use a brake switch that's a pressure style brake switch so we come right off of the, the proportioning valve it's just a like a T right there screws right into it and then this goes on just all this is a switch when it hits pressure it makes contact between these two so you're running a wire your brake wires is positive and then when it connects you have power and it, it engages your your brake lights they turn on come around I mean, we could turn these, come clean, come tight with no loop. But if you ever have to move something or take it apart or, or just mess with your brake lines, it is awful handy to have this little bit, a little bit of room. You can move things around. It's not so tight. If you got to, for some reason, if you happen to uh, get a leak on the end and you needed to reflare it and you needed to come back another quarter inch or something, well, there's a quarter inch here. You can take it and you can have it back here and. It's just something we do in ours. It's not necessary, but it doesn't look bad. Um, it's a separate bracket for a standard master cylinder versus a booster. The standard cylinder is a little bit different bracket. It's in a little bit different place. And the... Uh, Over here. Oh, there we go. Here's one set up with a... Just so you can see it's a little bit different bracket. This is a. Uh, this looks like a 27 frame, and it's uh, going to be set up with a 9 inch, obviously. So we come back. The dual reservoir master, master cylinder. I mean, the old single. That's the old days. If you got one, I would highly recommend. At least if it, your master cylinder goes out, it only halfway goes out. If you got just a single uh, well one, it uh, goes out. You got no brakes. Uh, check, well, let's just get all the way around the back first. So, same thing, I'm coming around the back. I've got to tee it at some point. So, what I've done, I've used um, through frame fittings again here, and there's going to be an AN fitting here with a braided line. It's going to come down, tie into the, whether it be uh, 
disc brakes or drum brakes, it doesn't matter, but it just goes in. Comes around the frame here, and the same, we're going to have an AN fitting with a braided line that comes down. And you can also, again, on the back here, you could weld a tab here. There's a fitting that goes in it with a clamp. Come down onto your rear end, and a lot of cars you'll see the instead of coming around on the frame with two coming down, it'll come down with one braided line, and then it'll be hard um, just all the way to both brakes on the differential itself. So this, we just chose to do it this way. We do it both ways, but this is the way we do it on this one. Uh, brakes, bottom line, the fundamentals of hydraulics, pretty simple. Um, there's no give. There's no give in that oil, just like there's no give in water where if I got air I can compress air and uh, that's why when you bleed your brakes you need to have all the air out because what will happen is your, um, your master cylinder is it tries to push that fluid to the brake into the wheel cylinder and push that pad out if there's air in it what it'll do is it'll compress that air and that air will compress before the, um, the pads on your brakes compress against your rotor or your, your caliper or whatever, you, or against your rotor or your drum in the back. Um, so bleed it. There's different ways to bleed. I think we'll do that on a different program altogether, just focused on bleeding. But generally, you got four wheels. You've got to split it. You've got a front. You've got a rear. Definitely, I would put a proportioning valve in there. And if for some reason I'm just wrong and your uh, back is locking up you know, way before your front, then you would need to move the proportioning valve and you could put it on the back side here. But the purpose of the proportioning valve is to restrict the flow. And as you restrict the flow, then the, the back brakes get more, more pressure to them faster than the front brakes do. So we're good there. We're quick. Um, today... We're just gonna make this just a quick one. We're probably not real long, Larry. We're you're, we're thinking about you, and I got thinking last night. If you did not watch um, the presidential welcome party or whatever the heck they called it last night, I seen it. There was a fireworks display at the end of that. Oh, incredible! It was just amazing. Uh, the music behind it, the choirs that sang, and then the uh, President Trump went to uh, and stood before the Lincoln Memorial. Um, powerful. We we usually end with uh, <coughs> a quote from my buddy Hot Rod Man out of his books, uh, Coffee Break Contemplations, or uh, um, what's the other one? Pass it on. But I looked up some Lincoln quotes um, just a little bit ago, and uh, so I want to do a quote. I'm going to do actually a couple quotes from Lincoln. Uh, and these are good. This is, you know, let's have a good time. Let's, let's uh, you know, build our hot rods, have fun. But um, there's, there's a lot of things in life that, that matter. In the end, it's not the years in your life that count. It's the life in your years. So don't get old and die without having accomplished something. Get focused. Do something. Have a good time. Interact. So that's a quote from Lincoln. That's a good one. In the end, it's not the years in your life that count, but the life in your years. Here's another one. I like this a lot. Most folks are about as happy as they make up their minds to be. I, I, I don't really like people who are always, oh, we're doomed, we're doomed, we're doomed. No, it's, let's have a good time doing what we're doing. Sometimes we have problems in life and it goes on, but we can still be happy. My God's in control, so that's a good thing. This is one really appropriate for today. Um, I'm going to end with this one for today. And uh, next week, next Monday, Larry, I'll be talking to you. And we're going to see Larry's car. We're going to see it upside down. We're maybe back right side up. But we're going to be doing some priming. We're going to be doing some painting. And um, we're a little late. The guys are, are back from lunch. And Josh is giving the zip it sign. So here's the last quote of the day. Nearly all men can stand adversity. But if you want to test a man's character, give him power. So, that's it for today. God bless President Trump. He's got a daunting task in front of him. Thank you, President Obama, for your service. 
And uh, let's go back to making America great, one hot rod at a time. Have a good day.